Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there, there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. So speaking so of that, important things. Like people shouldn't think, I, 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 I should, people shouldn't think, well, I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, it's normal to be to feel fear, like you'd have to, there'd be something mentally wrong if you didn't feel fear. Um, so you just feel it and let the importance of it drive you to do it anyway? Yeah, I, you know, I, actually something that can be helpful is fatalism, uh, to some degree. Um, if, you just, if you just accept the probabilities, um, then that diminishes fear. Uh, so, um, when starting SpaceX, I thought the odds of success were less than 10%. Um, and I just accepted that actually probably I would just lose lose everything, um, but that maybe we'd make some progress if we could just move the ball forward. Even if we died, maybe some other company could pick up the baton and move and keep moving it forward, um, so that we still do some good. Um, yeah, same with Tesla. I thought you know, the odds of a car company succeeding were extremely low. If you look at the uh, at the, the progress in space. In 1969, we were able to send somebody to the moon. 1969. Mm. Um, then we had the, the space shuttle. The, the space shuttle could only take people to low Earth orbit. Mm. Then the space shuttle retired, and the United States could take no one to orbit. The, so that's the trend. The trend is like down to nothing. This is not. If you are mistaken when. They think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It, it only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. And actually, it, it will, I think, it by itself, degrade, actually. Mm -hmm. You look at great civilizations like ancient Egypt, and they're able to make the pyramids, and they forgot how to do that. Mm. And, and the Romans, they built these incredible aqueducts. They forgot how to do it. You know, it almost seems, you know, listening to you and look at the different things you've done, that you've got this, this unique double motivation on everything that I, I find so interesting. Um, we, we, you know, which is, one is this um, desire to work for humanity's long-term good. The other is this desire to do something exciting. And it's, it's often, it feels like you, you feel like you need the one to drive the other. With, with Tesla, you want to have sustainable energy, so you make these super ex sexy, exciting cars to do it. You know, solar energy, we need to get there, so we need to make these beautiful roofs. We haven't even spoken about your newest thing, which we don't even have time to do, but you want to save humanity from bad AI, and so you're going to create this really cool brain-machine interface to give us all infinite memory and telepathy and so forth. Um, and on, on, on Mars, it feels like what you're saying is, yeah, we need, we need to save humanity and have a, have a backup plan, but also we need to inspire humanity, and, and, yeah. and, and, and this, is, this is a way to inspire. I think, I think the, the, the value of beauty and inspiration is, is very much underrated, no question. Um, but I want to be clear, I like, I'm not trying to be anyone's savior. Uh, that is not the... I, I'm just trying to think about the future and not be sad. Milan, how, how have you done this? Th these projects are so... These PayPal, SolarCity, Tesla, SpaceX, they're so spectacularly different. They're such ambitious projects at scale. How on earth has one person been able to innovate in this way? What is it about you? Um, I don't know, actually. Um, 
I, I don't have a good answer for you. I work a lot. I mean, that's and a lot. Um, I, okay, I, well, I have a theory. I have okay. a theory. All right. My my theory is that you have an ability to think at a system level of design that pull together design, technology, and business. So if Ted was TBD, design, technology, <laughs> business, into one package, synthesize it in a way that very few people can, and, and this is the critical thing, feel so damn confident in that click-together package that you take crazy risks. You bet, you bet your fortune on it, and you seem to have done that multiple times. I mean, almost no one can do that. Is that, can we have some of that secret sauce? Can we put it into our education system? Can someone learn from you? It, it is truly amazing what you've done. Oh, thanks. Um, Thank you. Well, I, I, I think there, I do think there's a, a good, a good framework for thinking is physics. You know, the sort of first principles reasoning. I mean, generally, the, I think there. Are, um, what, what I mean by that is, uh, boil things down to the, the, their fundamental truths and reason up from there, as opposed to reasoning by analogy. Um, through most of our life, we, we we get through life by reasoning by analogy, which essentially means kind of copying what other people do with slight variations. Um, and you have to do that, other, otherwise, it's it's. Mentally, you wouldn't be able to get through the day. Um, but when you when you want to do something new, you you have to you have to apply the the, the, the physics approach. And physics has really sort of figured out how to discover new things that are counterintuitive, like quantum mechanics. It's really counterintuitive. So, I think I think that's an important thing to do. And then also um, to really pay attention to negative feedback uh, and solicit it, particularly from friends. Um, this may sound like sort of s simple advice, but it's. Hardly anyone does that, and, and it's incredibly helpful.